Hi! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm continuing to work on this dinosaur drawing with pastel pencils. And this is part three so far in this series. I really was hoping that I would be um, able to finish it in this video, but I'm afraid I wasn't able to finish the whole thing um, by, uh, by tonight. And um, I have to put this video up, so um, this will be um, out, up on YouTube tomorrow. And I've still not finished it yet, so there's going to be a part four, and part four will be the last one. But um, I really wanted to ask you, obviously as my viewers, it's really important to me to see what, um, what is actually interesting for you to watch. And uh, I wanted to ask if you're okay with watching um, like a larger project like this being split into multiple videos. Or would you pre prefer to see kind of smaller projects completed in one session? There is of course another alternative because I do sometimes do work um, that takes a lot longer to do and I generally just don't film it because I don't know how long it's going to take, if it's going to take a few weeks or a few months, so I just do the drawings and then I do um, kind of smaller projects that I film for my YouTube. But I guess um, for a drawing that might take several months to do, I could film small portions of it and then in editing put it together and show you how it comes out sort of thing. So if that's something that you would be interested in, let me know. If you're okay with watching um, videos split into parts, perhaps not as many as four, so I'm not doing the same thing for a month, but um, I do genuinely want to know what your opinion is. If you could let me know in the comments, that would be absolutely amazing. Now with this dinosaur, the main thing I'm trying to achieve now is the texture of his skin. So I decided to finish off his head because his head's got different kinds of textures and different size and shape of these um, kind of bubbles that he's covered in. And uh, it kind of helps me see how I want the rest of him to look. And I'm now using only pastel pencils because I've realized um, Despite it being kind of easier to do certain small details with the polychromos pencils, when it's done, they don't look quite as bright as the pastel pencils come out in the end. So um, I'm going to try and keep sharpening my pencils and um, continue just using pastel pencils from now on. Now I'm alternating um, light and dark, so I've picked up my darkest color now to do the shadow areas and I'm paying attention to the curves of his body. So I figured if I put in all the shadows first and darken the areas that I want darkened, then I can see um, how and where I want to place the highlights and the midtones. And um, also the size of these kind of bubbles varies as well based on um, sort of the area where they're placed and how far they are from the, um, from the line of sight. So um, in the dark areas, I'm kind of um, doing solid black um, dots and letting the, um, the color, um, the sort of underneath layer of color be the surrounding kind of bubble for those dots. Whereas um, when they get bigger, I'm actually drawing circles and the, uh, the color inside makes them, um, makes them look lighter. I will add highlights to them later, but I'm relying on this effect throughout to, um, to kind of achieve this texture. The tail and the feet are areas I haven't done much to up till now, so um, obviously drawing in a little bit of detail as well as I come to new areas that um, I've not done. And um, yeah, I just had to fill in a little bit of green around the tail there where um, it kind of wasn't coming up to the tail because the tail wasn't properly drawn just yet. And also, as I'm uh, still using the black pencil, I'm alternating the pressure for where I want it to look kind of jet black and where I just want some um, sort of grayish, darkish kind of outlines. But also, I'm trying to avoid giving the whole thing a black outline because I don't want it to look cartoony. The same kind of thing applies as when using paint or markers. A black outline makes things look cartoony. And this isn't what I want for this particular drawing. So um, obviously some areas outlines are needed, they're going to be um, backed up by highlights later, but um, for the most part where I've done outlines in the back of the leg is going to be an area that's um, sitting solidly in the shadow. And um, now instead of going straight to the highlights, I'm going into a mid-tone and a very warm kind of pinkish color 
where um, I want the the dark and the light areas to sort of meet and um, some of these areas I'm just putting down dots because um, the background color of the skin is going to provide the kind of surrounding bubble and in some areas of these dots I am going to actually draw circles around them later with either a light or a dark color depending on um, if I want it to look sort of in the shadows or or in the highlight. I recently bought this long point pencil sharpener that I was hoping would be good for pastels and the reason being is it's nothing like my normal crank sharpener that's absolutely amazing for um, graphite and any other kind of um, hardcore pencils but absolutely destroys any uh, softcore pencils. Um, this sharpener is designed to be able to give you a dull tip. So um, even though it creates a long point, what it does is it shaves off the um, wood around the core, but uh, it has nine or 10 settings. And if I put it on the dullest tip, um, when I set the sharpener, then what it does is the tip that comes out at the end of the pencil is about two millimeters wide, which is, um, well, it's quite thick if you think about um, trying to get a sharp pencil. Um, but when it comes to pastels, it's um, long and kind of pointy enough that if you rotate the pencil, you can get quite um, quite a fine edge for details. And um, obviously, I can always scrape it on um, a blade like my hovel blade and just get a really sharp tip. And so far, it's been brilliant. I haven't broken a single pastel pencil and I'm quite pleased with it. If you like, I'll leave a link in the description. I got it from Amazon, so um, it turned out to be a really kind of good buy for this. Now, after working on some mid-tone in the upper body, I'm back to doing the shadows again, but this time I've chosen a dark brown because um, I never really want to do all the shadows in black because it has a tendency to kind of suck the color out of a page and just make everything feel a bit monotone. So it's a really good idea to try and achieve shadows with colors. And um, again, I'm going in with dots and alternating them and I'm not putting them everywhere. I'm just trying to think where I want the sort of really darker areas to be in, um, in this portion and adding the really dark dots in those areas. And then I'm gonna uh, pick a lighter brown and possibly a warmer brown on top of that and just mix them all in there. Now this is a sort of um, long and time consuming process and there's no real way of speeding it up. So it just has to be approached with patience. So alternating bits is quite good. Like I've um, gone from doing dots on the other side to doing circles on this side and uh, just achieving different textures in different areas. And I always tell myself if something starts feeling tedious, just put it aside and do something else because um, you always want to enjoy the art, enjoy the process, enjoy what you're doing. Otherwise, um, it's going to show in the finished piece. So um, yeah, that's just, um, that's just my theory about that. So even though I hadn't finished the circles on the shoulder, I felt like I was starting to mess them up a little bit. Um, I decided to switch to doing feet. This is a kind of a small, very interesting area and uh, just helps my mind focus on something else for a little bit. And um, also um, adding the highlights here, which also make it um, just a lot more interesting to do because uh, I tend to add the highlights at the end, but these are, um, very small kind of sections and they kind of need it and I figured I might as well just do them now and bring the feet to life. Alternating like this doesn't just stop me from getting bored and helping me keep my focus. It also has a tendency to kind of um, help me see the bigger picture as it were because um, I mean, imagine if, um, and I've done this before, but say I'm sitting there for five hours straight doing these tiny little dots and then realize that I've messed up the whole thing because I was too zoomed in on the dots and forgot to look at the actual dinosaur. And now the whole thing is just um, too even or too monotone or too, I don't know, something. And it just doesn't look right. So doing it in smaller bits is good. And I decided to take just a little bit more of a break from doing the texture by um, kind of throwing in a few highlights into the water, into these ferns before I go back to doing um, his scales. 
Now he really is getting there, but I'm not going to be able to finish him tonight because I still have to edit this video and upload it for tomorrow. So there's going to be one more part, part four, and that will be the last one for this dinosaur. So um, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe so you can see the final result next week. Thanks again. See you soon.